Hello, folks. I got a box full of goodies here from one of Miniature Market's recent sales. And uh, I wanted to go over some of their own brand of resin terrain, tiny terrain. Uh, I've been collecting some of these uh, pieces here and there uh, for a little while now, but I don't see very many people talking about it. So I figured I would uh, pull out some of what I got here in my little box of goodies, and uh, we can go over and take a peek. whole bunch of stuff here. We'll start off with my uh, my favorite piece as the Tiny Terrain does, which is these sandbags. And then they do four or five sandbag pieces here. Biggest one is this curved wall here, about four inches. They have a number of smaller pieces here. Now, what I've been using before I bought these was uh, Warlord Games sandbags made for their bolt action range. You can get these in a bunch of their kits along with, uh, you can also just purchase them. I bought a, a number of them. So, one of the biggest differences here is going to be the fact that the tiny terrains are about a buck a piece and the Warlord Game ones are four fifty. The last time I bought these was a couple of years ago. I'm assuming they're the same price. I will say that with the Warlord game ones, the sandbags themselves are uh, definitely more in scale for the uh, 28 millimeter, whereas the tiny terrain pieces are um, huge. Um, they're like grain bags here instead of sandbags, but uh, they are a lot cheaper. I definitely think they are well worth the money. They paint up pretty well. I have a number of them painted up here in a uh, vaguely khaki-ish, brownish color. Um, real easy to paint. I think I knocked out uh, over a dozen of these one night uh, simply with uh, priming, airbrushing, washing, uh, a little dry brush. Um, done. They make fantastic terrain pieces. Hard cover in bolt action. Also, I played a French and Indian War game at a local convention, and uh, the game master had a number of tree stumps. Um, as terrain. Um, so these were on sale. I decided to pick up a couple of their just stumps. To check them out. They're neat little pieces. You know, a little less than an inch square. Um, good enough for cover for one man if you're doing a uh, some sort of skirmish game. I also picked up a couple of these fossilized skull ones. These are real cool for uh, any kind of fantasy game. Uh, so I picked up a couple of regular ones. I also saw that they had a clear uh, resin one. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to uh, wash and uh, dry brush this and keep the clear resin effect. Um, we'll see. Worst case scenario is I just prime it um, and it's another solid colored one. These are neat. Again, just about an inch square. Cool little scatter terrain pieces. I also picked up I don't play many uh, games where these would fit in historically, but uh, these little uh, gambins here, um, about four inches long, single pieces are again just about a, a square inch. They're neat, they're pretty cheap, um, you know, a couple of bucks a piece here, um, definitely enough detail make these quick little paintings, throw them down as cover. A lot taller than the sandbags, um, but then again, they, they would have been, these were you know, uh, more in line for uh, Civil War, Revolutionary War, etc. I also picked up a number of scenic pieces here. Potentially for D&D &D games, I picked up a couple of uh, fire pit pieces here. This one is just the fire pit, little wood pile here, now, about three and a half inches square, nice little terrain piece. But they also have a camp set here with a fire pit, a couple of empty um, sleeping bags, a guy in a sleeping bag would uh, 
uh, wood pile here. Um, great if your adventurers are uh, either being ambushed or ambushing a camp. Um, they're on sale. Um, I don't recall the price, but uh, they were cheap enough that I picked them up. Who knows when I'll play D&D next. Now, I already have a whole bunch of shell craters from a couple of different manufacturers, but I figured I'd pick up a couple more, add a little variety uh, to my collection. I have a small one here, you know, one and a half by two, give or take. And then this is actually their medium one. Uh, they were out of stock on the large one, otherwise I would have picked up one of them too. Um, what we tend to do with these is we throw these down on the roads on bolt action to help break up the roads so that someone's not zipping all the way across the board uh, in one action. Uh, sometimes we also say that they uh, are soft cover if a figure is inside of them but nothing across. Um, you know, the figure is hiding down in the impact crater. Um, so they're a nice little variety to the collection that I already have. Now, we also have a number of these dungeon pieces here. Some of them are generic enough to be used in, uh, in whatever you wanted to, like this little banded crate here. So I picked up a couple of those. Not quite big enough for scattered terrain, but if you just want to give your dungeon a little bit of flavor, that's cool. Uh, a more traditional treasure chest, if you will. Tiny little piece. We also have one that is a, a little more of a scenic piece here with a, uh, a little keg on it. I picked up a couple of these uh, dwarven chests, is how I think of them. They almost kind of look like benches if you're just looking at them from the top. So a closed one and an open one here. Now this open one has uh, a bunch of detail on the treasure on the inside. Um, it's really good. And then they also had a, a, a little more traditional one here. Uh, detail's not as good on the inside, uh, but I think that'll still paint up, dry brush up real awesome. They also have a torture chair. Might be a little hard to see on the video here, but there's little uh, iron clamps at the arms and the legs to lock your victim in. Um, it's really thin, but surprisingly strong. I don't want to snap that off, but I don't have to worry about this uh, breaking while it's uh, either being manhandled on the table or just in the plastic case full of uh, scenic pieces that I have. So that's, uh, that's a little surprising. I see a lot of um, resin pieces this small uh, just get really fragile and bust off. Now, also, one of the things I picked up was a uh, Blood and Plunder set. So, I saw this boat on sale. Um, it is wider than the Blood and Plunder longboat. Um, I'm not sure how this will fit in uh, with the actual game, if I even wind up playing the actual game of Blood, Blood and Plunder, or if I wind up just using the figures for other things. Um, I have a number of rowboats. Uh, for D&D uh, &D and Blood and Plunder and uh, Frostgrave and uh, whatever else I need them for. So maybe I'll do a video on the different ones. Um, again, this one has a number of thin pieces. Uh, I've been very impressed. Uh, I, don't, I don't know enough about resin to know what they're doing, but uh, they're casting these thin pieces really well uh, with still a lot of detail um, and you know, not too many defects. Uh, one thing I have noticed consistently over the line is these uh, seem to be, uh, you know, drop cast, gravity cast, instead of uh, pressure pot casts. So there are uh, bubbles and some defects. Um, the larger pieces, like this one and uh, the scenic pieces here, um, tend to have a little, I don't know, overpour maybe on the bottom. So there's occasionally a little extra, a little extra there keeping it up, um, but I have yet to notice any one that is not uh, still flat. Um, so I've never had one that's got any defects that you know cause it to tilt. Uh, so that's good. Um, if it bothers you, uh, you can always just take a belt sander to it. Some of these pieces, like the shell crater here, they have sanded the bottom down, made it nice and even. Um, so I don't know if there's a, if there's a limit where uh, if this was too bumpy they sanded it, but this wasn't too bumpy, so they didn't. So that's what I picked up. Um, I do, like I said, I have a whole bunch 
of pieces from Tiny Terrain. These are the sandbags I picked up. These are just a, uh, a small amount of the unpainted sandbags that I have. And again, uh, the Warlord ones. Um, I have uh, six or eight of these Warlord ones. Uh, and then as soon as these Tiny Terrain ones came out, um, I stopped buying the Warlord ones and started buying these. Uh, a lot cheaper, a lot easier to fill out the table for about uh, 10 or 15 bucks. You can put sandbag emplacements uh, everywhere on the table that you want to. One of the things I picked up on a, a previous sale are these tiny little ladders. Now, uh, I know a lot of people are going to say that these things are so easy to make. Uh, and you're right. Uh, you make these real quick out of, a, you know, toothpicks or, uh, or whatever you want to. But uh, these were 50 cents a piece uh, when they were on sale. Um, so for 50 cents, uh, I'm not going to bother making one. Uh, I picked up two of these. Uh, I should have picked up uh, a lot more. Um, they're pretty cleanly cast. You can see a little bit of flash on the inside here. Uh, I will say that is the most flash I've seen on any of the Tiny Terrain pieces. Uh, they're generally very clean, although I will say the sandbags have this uh, mold line. Most of them do. The newer ones that I got um, do not. I don't know if they redid the molds or what. Um, but even these, a uh, couple of minutes with a file, uh, if it really bothers you, um, on some of these I filed them down, uh, and they can be done. Uh, but these ladders, for 50 cents a piece, I am just going to spray paint these uh, with a brown spray paint, uh, do a, a wash and a dry brush. Um, you know, it's going to be about a minute worth of work on each one of these. Uh, and at 50 cents a piece, I'm not going to bother, um, you know, spending the 15, 20 minutes to make one. I also picked up uh, one of these a uh, little more period generic crates here. I mean, it's a wooden crate. There's not much to it. I have these uh, three-piece, or pardon me, three grave. Grave sets with two uh, fresher graves and then one little uh, tomb here. It's got a little cross carved into it. These tombstones are separate pieces. They have to be glued on. But again, they're nice. They're nice little scenic pieces. Wouldn't call these cover, but you know, they're three by three. Nice little addition to any graveyard. Got a well. Again, here uh, a, a little bit period uh, or you know time agnostic. I use these in my French board for bolt action. Put these next to a ruined farmhouse. Tiny bit of cover for a two-man team. Mostly just a scenic piece, definitely dresses it up, makes the boards look fantastic. I also have trenches. I already have a bunch from uh, ArmorCast, I believe, but I picked up this little uh, machine gun nest uh, sandbag and wood emplacement. Uh, lots of detail. Rocks, wooden pieces, corrugated iron in the, in the center there. Um, one of the things that I found uh, cute was they put little footprints in there. It uh, gives it the effect that this is a little muddy little pit that somebody uh, happens to be crouching in. Um, I will say that the inside of this is pretty small. Uh, maybe a 30 millimeter base would fit in there, but not one of the 40 or 50 or 60 millimeter uh, scenic uh, sized bases that Warlord gives you for their machine gun teams. Um, I don't base mine that way, so uh, these usually uh, my machine gun teams fit in there, or if I usually turn it into a, more of a, a line here so I can fit a whole squad in hardcover. And again, these big pieces run like four bucks, three, four bucks a piece. Um, you can catch them on sale a lot of times too. Uh, definitely worth it. They definitely dress up the board to make them look fantastic. I have a number of sci fi pieces. I have this little communications array here. Uh, this is a three-piece um, unit. It is a base, the dish, and this uh, joint in the middle here, um, a little elbow joint, if you will. Um, I did have to pin it on there uh, on the bottom um, and a tiny little pin on top. Uh, it's thin, but of course, you know, it, uh, the, the joint is right where this little nubbin is at the top. Um, I, the first time that I glued it on there, it uh, came off pretty easy, so I just tossed a pin in there. Um, very well detailed. I really like this piece. It has a number of support. Um, feet here, almost as if this was uh, portable. 
we have a, a control console, a couple of wires. There's enough detail in there that uh, these are going to paint up great. Um, I primed this and uh, airbrushed it with a charcoal craft paint and then uh, put it aside and didn't touch it again. So, you know, it's a, it's a bad gamer habit, but uh, I need to get this back on the paint table and uh, finish this up. Awesome sci-fi piece. So when I was thinking about starting Star Wars Legion, they came out with these escape capsules. Now, uh, I bought these, and then uh, I think the next week, um, FFG announced their own uh, escape capsule, crashed escape capsule piece. Um, and these do seem to be smaller, um, but again, they're also a lot cheaper. Uh, packed with detail. A little bit scale agnostic. You know, these, these hatches are tiny here. Um, this is far more like a uh, 15 millimeter piece, um, you know, or, or even 6 millimeter piece. But again, it's just a scenic piece. It's not meant to be, a, you know, a two scale vehicle. The crashed one. It's pretty decent. Fanged up. Blown out hatch, you know. It crashed into the ground. Um, nice little piece. About 2 by 4 ish, give or take. Great objective. One of the other things that I love that they have are these Jersey Barriers. Now, I've seen Jersey Barriers from a number of companies. Um, they tend to not be too cheap. Uh, these go for uh, about a buck or two bucks a piece, I believe. About the same pricing scheme that the sandbag um, sections are. Now they have their standard undamaged regular old Jersey Barrier piece. And I got three of those. Those have a number of damaged ones here, so a couple of bullet holes, but a, a mostly intact one. Uh, one with a giant chunk taken out of the middle. And then two kind of end pieces, if you will. These are two uh, different ones here. And you can use them. And they kind of slope down at the end. See, this is great. I need to go on and buy, uh, you know, a dozen or so more of these guys to help fill out an urban board. Any kind of post-apocalyptic or, uh, you know, urban pandemic. Um, these would be great for a uh, division uh, game. You know, Tom Clancy's The Division. Or any post-apocalyptic period, really. And these will paint up fantastically quick. A little bit of ridges in there. Um, not sure if that's from 3D printing or, uh, or purposeful. I mean, these are basically, you know, gravity-casted concrete, so it's entirely likely. Um, but it also means I'll take a dry brush pretty decently. So that's my collection here of uh, tiny terrain pieces. I have a lot more of the sandbags painted up. Uh, like I said, I have uh, probably 18 or 20 uh, of these painted pieces. Grab these so that we could set up multiple tables at the club. Or they'll go great with my trench system from ArmorCast. The whole table full of hardcover. Nobody will die. I'll all be close assaults. So, uh, that was my haul and collection of Tiny Terrain from Miniature Market. I would definitely check them out. Uh, pick some up. Easy to paint. Easy on the wallet. Uh, thank you guys. I will talk to you later.